It is night with glaring sunshine. I stand in the woods and I look towards my house with its misty blue walls. As though I were recently dead and saw the house from a new angle. It has stood for more than 80 summers. Its timber has been impregnated four times with joy and three times with sorrow. When someone who has lived in the house dies, it is repainted. The dead person paints it himself without a brush from the inside. On the other side is open terrain, formerly a garden, now wilderness. A steel surf of wheat, pagodas of wheat, an unfurling body of text, you panaches of wheat, a viking fleet of wheat, dragon heads, lances, an empire of wheat. Above the overgrown garden flutters the shadow of a boomerang, thrown again and again. It is related to someone who lived in the house long before my time, almost a child. An impulse issues from him, a thought, a thought of will, create, draw. In order to escape his destiny in time. The house resembles a child's drawing, a deputizing childishness which grew forth because someone prematurely renounced the charge of being a child. Open the doors, enter. Inside, unrest dwells in the ceiling and peace in the walls. Above the bed, there hangs an amateur painting representing a ship with 17 sails, rough sea, and a It is always so early in here. It is before the crossroads, before the irrevocable choices. I am grateful for this life. And yet I miss the alternatives. All sketches wish to be real. motor far out on the water extends the horizon of the summer night. Both joy and sorrow swell in the magnifying glass of the dew. We do not actually know it, but we sense it. Our life has a sister vessel which plies an entirely different route. While the sun burns, behind the island.